Anyway, let's call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. It's December 19th, 2019. And we'll do a roll call. All right, we have Joe. Present. Paul. Present. Ruth. Present. Ben. Here. Judy. Present. And I'm Chairman Ruth. All right, so approval of the minutes. First, we have a budget workshop from November 21st, 2019. Entertain any motions. Move to approve the minutes of the budget workshop. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any comments, questions, additions, subtractions, edits? <coughs> Barring none, all in favor? Not opposed. And one abstention, sorry. Who all right. Me. He um, all right, so uh, the regular monthly meeting minutes on November 21st, 2019. Can I just hand a motion? Move to approve the <laughs> budget workshop minutes from November 21st. You already did that. Can I have the regular monthly oh, meeting instead? Regular monthly meeting, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take a second. 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 Thank you. Okay. Any additions, subtractions, edits? Barring none. All in favor? Aye. None opposed, one abstain. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> nice job, Henry. Yes. Superintendent's report. Okay. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of November is included in the packet. All right, we check in. Well, for the month was 1.28 million gallons a day. Our phone quality was well within our permitted requirements. We averaged 94% BOD removal, 98% total suspended solids removal. Uh, uh, with concentrations of 12 and 5 milligrams per liter, uh, respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of November is included in the packet. We had a couple of anomalies and uh, they're explained on the spreadsheet. These are from electronics flows. Uh, on the 20 Second, uh, we had three students from the Breakwater School in Portland tour the facility. Uh, the students came prepared. Um, give the teachers a lot of credit for this. Uh, they had uh, questions developed concerning wastewater treatment, and uh, as we conducted the tour, they noted that, uh, that the, the smell actually decreased as we made our way through the plant. So, which of the boys are, are below? We had fun. They're, they're a great bunch of kids. Ted Berry Company has been TVing uh, the sewers in the uh, Pleasant Hill area. They're, they've now done 10,000 feet of sewer uh, TV inspection for us. And um, we uh, actually budget for 10,000 a year at this point, and they're going to continue uh, uh, beginning of the year to do the next 10,000 feet, so we'll, we'll roll into that. Uh, Yesterday, I met with uh, several other superintendents and chief plant operators, and we met with uh, President Cassidy and his academic dean over at SMCC uh, to discuss uh, the interest in the development of curriculum for water and wastewater treatment. Uh, they're offering three programs, or we're looking into offering three programs, one being an associate's degree, and then two certificate degrees, one uh, for water and one for wastewater. So that's going to be an ongoing uh, development. Uh, last month, I notified you of a recent check fraud. This past month, Key Bank credited our account for the full amount. So we're good to go on that. Uh, last, during the rate hike public hearing, a uh, question comment was raised with regard uh, to if commercial users would also be subject to the rate hike and if the board would consider putting more of a burden on the commercial users since in the speaker's opinion, they are a greater cause of any degradation of uh, infrastructure. Uh, they also, also reference the clam, bake, and ready seafood, uh, which is also known as the actual you know, as, as I stated during this public hearing, commercial users would be subject to the same increase as residential users. 
I also mentioned uh, commercial buildings that are based on water consumption as compared to our flat rate system that we use for residential uses. Consequently, the sewer bills for commercial uses are directly proportional to their water use. What I didn't have on hand during the public hearing were the actual <coughs> sewer bills for the businesses and uh, that she highlighted. In 2019, uh, the Clam Lake sewer bill, uh, total sewer bill has been $19,476.86 in AC Seafood Ventures. Their sewer bill was uh, $64,150.48 as compared to a typical residential bill of $396. Uh, two other things uh, to add to my report. Today we did have an uh, uh, inspection from DEP. Uh, Matt Height from DEP was at the plant and conducted his inspection. Uh, it went very, very well. And I know I had one more other thing, but now I can't remember what it was. So if it comes to mind, I'll bring it up. Any questions on the superintendent's report? Comments? I had a question about the Southern Maine Community College meeting. Mm -hmm. um, would this, if it went to actually come to fruition, would it certainly supplant what Jetsy does now uh, in wastewater one? Or would that continue? That would probably continue. Um, because they, they're, they're catering to different. SMTC is getting to full, more full-time student business versus what just to is. I didn't do it. What's that? No. Okay. Good to know. Any more questions for the superintendent? All right. Correspondence. Uh, we have one piece of correspondence uh, going out. And it's regards to the, the Downs uh, Core Residential, uh, which they're referring to as Phase 4, and it's an ability to serve letter, and I attached a copy of this letter, uh, and I provided it to Goral Palmer, and um, as described in the attached documents, uh, they are discussing, uh, they are proposing 135 residential users in this next phase. I'm curious, full build out, how many residents will be there? In the, in the, full, entire, in the, yeah, in the entire? I don't know off the top of my head. Just curious. Yeah. I don't know if you ever know. I do not. Hmm. Uh, with the animal <laughs> <laughs> Um, Old business, there is no new business. Um, the 2020 budget. Yeah. Uh, the proposed budget summary for the 2020 uh, the year 2020 is included in your packet. Last month we had the workshop um, where the trustees and uh, and I went through the details of the budget, including each line item uh, that makes up the budget. <coughs> the budget summary is uh, uh, before you, and the summary of which is. Um, it, oh, by the way, there's no changes to the budget that we ended up discussing in the one that we're going on tonight. Uh, so the operating budget before any capital expenditures is $3.4 million, which is an increase of 4.5%. Operating budget including capital expenses, expenditures uh, that fall under the operations is $3.6 million, or with an increase of 4.9%. Fixed asset capital expenditures are budgeted at $1.3 million, an increase of 177%. Uh, 750000 of that is for a forced main replacement in Route uh, 114. Um, there are no capital reserve expenditures, so the total budget is $4.9 million for overall increase of 25.9%. Entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Any discussions, questions, comments? Okay. All in favor of that? 
None opposed. Thank you, David. Got to be busy yet. Yeah. Zoom drain, lot six. Lot six innovation district. So on behalf of SKSTVS Holdings LLC, uh, St. Clair Associates has requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed 10,000 square foot office slash warehouse with that one below. Zoom drain will uh, occupy 5,240 square feet of it, and then they'll have tenants making up the remainder 4,760 square feet. The sewer service will connect into the proposed public sewer that will be constructed within the private right of way and includes both an oil water sa separator and a sampling at home. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The requested wastewater flow is 160 gallons per day of table room sanitary waste, of, uh, based, which is based on the district's minimum flow allocation. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts and characteristics are subject to additional approvals. This lot was uh, approved as part of phase one of the innovation district with the allocation of 160 gallons per day. With that, no additional capacity reserve fee is due. Any flows in excess of the approved amount are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Uh, an intercenter uh, uh, permit is required for the oil water separator. A complete application and internal plumbing plan and associated fee shall be submitted to the district time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no plumbing or sewer work shall be completed. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade directly above the pipe and trace of water installed adjacent to the sewer service. A CCTV inspection and installed sewer is required at the completion of the project. Provide copies of the documentation that defines ownership and maintenance requirements of the private way. Final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval to the, uh, prior to the issuance of the permits. The sewer permit is required and complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to that, no site sewer work uh, shall be completed. Uh, this approval is subject to completion and acceptance of the sewer system within uh, end of the, uh, the innovation district. Uh, and it's subject to the district's acceptance of the 8-inch sewer main within the private shared access draft. Um, professionally surveyed electronic geo reference CAD drawings and then stamp PDF the CAD drawings and stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district of Pond. That is granted by conditions. Okay. Second. <coughs> With the Stipulations. Stipulations enumerated. Any discussion? Questions? I had some. I um, wonder if we're getting ahead of ourselves because we don't have the. Do we have the final plans for the. the uh, no, we do not. For the, yeah. for the roadway? Yeah. We do not. That, uh, the layout is, is defined the right of way um, and the layout and preliminary drawings have been presented to me with regards to the sewer service uh, in the private way uh, but that has not been presented in front of the board or accepted by the board that's why it was an addition you did have a, a um, approval not, not the last, it was the last meeting or meeting before? The meeting before we got over. Yeah. yeah, and was that one of the roads that we accepted? Or yes. That we, that, that we accepted, we identified, uh, the original approval of the Innovation District did not include any of the private uh, access roads. And it was very clear along that line. Um, the amended approval two months ago, I guess it is, yes. um, amended that approval to accept the private the sewers within the private right of ways, um, pending you know uh, the, the design approval and uh, easement approval um, 
for the, the gravity portions of those rooms because there's also some roads that have uh, pressure sewer and uh, the board did, chose not to accept those pressure sewers as district. Um, but the actual, we did not have plans to vote on at that time. It was more of a um, policy. Conception. Uh, um, because how the lots were being going to be developed, they, they weren't sold yet. They could be sold as one and there would be a private way. Uh, this this one road right here uh, it, it is now uh, with presumed drain in the back. There is definitely going to be a, a private uh, a private right of way with uh, public infrastructure in, the, in that roadway. Including other utilities, water and, water and, and, and gas. gas and electric. So where do we draw the line for um, where we're going to be responsible and where each individual? The walk? property lines, because the private right right away will, will is defined, um, and then each lot has uh, is defined. Originally, the uh, so that's the private right of way right there. Oh, that's the private. Yeah, I couldn't tell. It's not. I know there's one actually there. Originally, um, St. Clair Associates did have uh, drawings for the sewer to be uh, in the private right of way to be a part of this, but I I pushed back on that because St. Clair Associates actually representing in this case Zoom Drain. And the private sewer really is under a crossholes holding, so we're kind of we're mixing over the applicants. Mm. So I, I thought this needs to stand alone, and the private sewer needs to stand alone. Which I think is what a, we envision would move forward yeah. from that vote. So I mean, everything is contingent upon the conditions, right? How do we as a board need to? Modify. It's in my approval. It's in our approval. No, I mean, I'm sorry, okay. not just this one, but in general, do we need to codify more than we did in that October meeting? No, I don't think so. What our policy is going to be. All right, good to know. I think we outlined it quite clearly that anybody that bought onto the properties would have to go through our approvals, and then that would be based on our acceptance of the water I mean, sewer main. So I would be appalled saying water. <laughs> But I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, they're, they're, uh, no. everything of their project is uh, contingent upon cross holdings and invasion run. Right? I mean, the, yeah. I mean, the pump yeah. station still needs to be built, and the innovation yeah. district still needs. I mean, there's a lot of lots that still needs to come. A lot into, of moving parts. A lot of moving parts to come into place before they actually can even do it. They're going to be well ready before. Yeah, they could be. So we have Nancy and David and Claire with us. Mr. Chairman, if I could just, just sure. kind of jump guess. in. David and I had had a conversation about this, and we do realize that uh, there's a couple of different pieces that, although they very much intermingle, they really have do they do have separate applicants that need to, to be reviewed. Uh, so the the private way plan and profile and all the utilities that come to this site we had submitted to David for him to take a look at when we submitted this application package. But as I understand it, and it, it makes sense as well, that um, Crossroads Holdings needs to be the applicant and file that private way plan to you folks for review and acceptance of the private way, which brings the service to this lot, and then this lot stands alone with the applicant for Zoom Drain. So we do, we do understand that. Uh, unfortunately, the timing kind of got backwards. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we're here tonight with Zoom Drain, uh, and we're hopefully with your next, availability at the next, next meeting, meeting, we'll be seeing that whole uh, plan for that private life coming through. Cool. Thank you. So should we make our vote contingent upon approval of? It's our it's already in the conditions. One of the conditions. Yeah. It's already in the conditions. So. Unrelated to those issues, Zoom Drain. Oh, I'm sorry, Doug, you have another question. Oh, oh, just on this. So our responsibility would be, Nancy is pointing out, oh, the right-of-way ends part 
way up. And up. Does the street go all the way through? I, no. Um, no. If you go to the cover sheet, that might be helpful to kind of look at it in a little bit different context there. Maybe that helps. I'm not sure if it's clear enough to show there. But the private way begins at Innovation Way and it crosses, it's, it spans, the center, center line of that private way spans the common lot lines between 28 and 29, uh, 11 and 12, and 6 and 7, and it ends about halfway up lot 6. So we're looking at lot 6 in particular. So if then you go to the the site plan showing it plus information on it. So if you go to the site plan, you can see sheet three. You can see that 50 foot quarter coming up through. The reason that there's two sets of lines at the end is the dash, the first dash line that's closest to the bottom of the page is where the original easement ended. The Port and Water District, in their review of the plans, asked that the water line get extended just a little bit past that. So that easement got extended on the order of about 10 feet. Uh, so that's why there's two sets of lines there. So that's where that easement comes down. It ends here. It comes down and goes all the way down to Innovation Way. 50 feet wide, a private access and utility easement uh, with water, sewer, power, uh, and drainage in it. And yes. So our responsibility would be what is within that easement? To the end of the easement all the way to innovation. Correct. And not until the time. Not until the time. It's the force me, right? Yes. Oh, does this have to be pumped? No, this no, is no, a gravity. No, no, that's gravity, gravity. but yeah. it, there wasn't Eventually the it's force. flowing to a pump station. Oh, to, yes. Out the highest yeah. part. Okay. So our responsibility would end at that manhole. The sampling, sampling manhole, manhole is car. basically at the interface with the private way and the property. So the sampling manhole is on the property. On the property? Yes. Well, outside the easement. Outside the easement, it's all on the property. But. So <laughs> we're not responsible for the sampling manhole. That correct. is correct. Yes, we yes, you can. So will, will we be reviewing other properties before we get the final plan? We already did. We already have no. reviewed in our block 28. I know. And approved <laughs> it. Thank you, Nancy and David. <laughs> but should we not approve any more until we get the final? I agree with that. I do too. Yeah, um, the, and I think it slipped through the cracks this last time. And when I identified it was too late to include it in the packet. They did did provide it, but it was just, it was in the 11th hour, and I, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't have enough time to review it thoroughly, and I didn't want to re uh, send it on to you guys unreviewed. I'd like to have easement reviewed by our attorney <coughs> before we um, sure. present it to you. So I, I suspect it will be ready for approval at the next trustees meeting. But moving forward, I think they have to, you know, either be concurrent or the the uh, private way acceptance has to precede the lot approval. Cool. This is kind of new ground, so mm -hmm. this is a, a very unique project. It's so. Go ahead. Um, I'm just a little. I'm showing my ignorance on civil, maybe, but uh, is there riprap here? No, that's um, that stabilized construction entrance is what you see. It's basically during construction. It's just a gravel pad to prevent any migration of any vines from the site onto the the roadway. So, that. so it's just, it looks it looks way more onerous than it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Unrelated to site issues. The company, Zoom Green, um, essentially deals with sewer issues. That is correct. Yeah. So um, Zoom Green has a staff of folks who will um, come to your house if your drain is clogged and you haven't been able to successfully deal with it. 
um, you know, roots that get into drain systems, that type of thing. They have specialized trucks and equipment that, um, and technicians that are uh, available to come out to either residential properties or they do do uh, work with commercial sites on uh, grease trap maintenance and that type of thing. Um, they do not pump septic tanks, um, so they won't be uh, involved with anything of that. But if you have a clogged uh, drain or sewer line, they have the equipment to jet it, basically. Uh, the purpose of the, the building, if you, if you um, saw the information on the building itself, they have overhead doors on either side, so it's allowing them to drive their trucks in at night because the trucks have uh, a, pump, a pump system with a 200-gallon tank on them of fresh water and that helps them with their jetting system for that. So rather than having to empty it during the winter months, they can just you know drive it into the building, keep it warm, and then just have to refill it as they need it. So. And the oil sand separator is there for when they wash those trucks. And then if the trucks get washed or just, you know, when a truck comes in and it's been snowing, it drips down, it can get into a, the drain and get out um, and be treated that way. So it's not Zoom Drain actually just did some work for the Rock Church at Park Hero 14. They're doing an expansion there that mm -hmm. the trustees approved, I think almost two years ago. Um, and while I was out there doing an inspection, their sampling man all had obvious signs of a backup. And not at the time, but you could see that it had backed up at one point in time and there was some. Uh, issues with regards to a lot of paper on the shelf, so I requested that they uh, TV and jet clean the line. And there was Zoom Drain that came out and did that work, and uh, Jay was there uh, as they did the work. And they, they identified some issues, and they're gonna. Uh, they, there was a uh, separated bend uh, in the sewer service up by the building that they're gonna repair, and they're gonna also epoxy coat the invert. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they appear to do, uh, they do Good to know. And that was leading to my next question. The epoxy coating, do they do in situ repairs? I don't know the extent of the detail of all of the services that they offer for that. Um, my, my personal experience with them has been on the residential level. Um, and I, from what I can gather, that's a, that's a big piece of what they do. And the reason I ask is, you know, when you talk about epoxy and other chemicals for lining sewers, you know, obviously when they line them it gets into sewers, but I don't want the chemicals themselves to go in. If they're stored at the facility, I guess that's my question, will they be storing chemicals in there? Uh, my vote is not contingent on the answer, just out of curiosity, what will they have on site? Well, I mean, it matters. What's that? I mean, it matters, right? <clears throat> it does matter. It does matter. But that's, I mean, most chemicals that they use hopefully will be caught in that oil sand separator. Most. I know a lot of the chemicals that, if you kind of go onto their website, a lot of them are um, sort of the biodegradable type products that they use in helping to you know, break up the clogs and that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, um, in, in speaking with the owner, I haven't. Uh, had any discussions with him about any sort of special materials handling areas or anything like that. So I don't anticipate that that is an issue. I can certainly ask the question and provide the and answer. And just follow up with this yeah. 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 What I can tell in the drawings, there is no internal grading system or drains in the, in the Bay Area. It's all external rain. There are floor drains in the, in the bays just to collect anything that would drip off the truck. Before. Yep. Uh, no, nope. I mean, nothing to hold up, but yeah, I mean, we want an answer to the, uh, the hazmat side of that as well, I guess. Yep. Uh, this should as add as a condition of approval. We could amend the motion on the uh, second stage. Motion amended. Second. 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 Do we know the size of the. Because if not, we want to request the tank. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be a detail on it. What's that? The size of the oil stands up already. Oh, yeah, it's on the fourth page, I believe. Yeah. sixth page. This is the fourth of the day. So what is that? Is it a 
I did not, but I did. <laughs> I, I heard you were on it. I was, but then I realized nobody was probably interested in what I was doing. <laughs> don't, don't we usually require a thousand gallons? No. We we're not throwing away the water separated. But for in, for uh, grease traps, uh, like for a restaurant application, uh, in the past the district had uh, required a minimum of a thousand dollar gravity grease separator. Uh, and we're actually moving away from the gravity grease separators because of other issues. Plugs. What's that? Plugs. No, actually, they um, uh, yeah, pH issue actually is a major, major problem. <coughs> uh, get some ugly degradation out of that as a result of that. So we're moving towards the hydro, hydro mechanical type grease traps, which yeah, we do a much better job anyway. We kind of keep the grease. So this would be just for the four, the four drains, right? Four drains. Okay. Four drains. So what would be size of that? It's just based on square footage of area that's being serviced. And um, it, that's how the, the plumbing codes are written. Um, and it's, uh, it's, I forget what the numbers are. Off the top of my head. Your conditions. Did you, did you do the numbers on that? Did not. So I'll have to double check on that. How many trucks are held in the building? They have space for, well, they have five trucks, one of which doesn't come to the building, so there'd be space to be able to drive in and put four within the, the bay for them. They have two other tenant spaces that they would envision would be um, for a comparable use, if we'll, we'll say, like an electrician may have a spot. Um, these, these spaces are designed to uh, basically have the opportunity to have the overhead door, maybe a space for a desk, um, somebody who just sort of is a startup company, that type of thing, something that would be a compatible use to them. Cool. At the time for uh, permitting the uh, oil water separator, is that when you're going to tell them how the water it has to be? Yeah, because once I see the plumbing drawings and the actual square footage of the servicing, we'll, we'll define the actual tank size. So that's when, when uh, grease traps are sized at, at that location. <coughs> All right, any more comments, questions? I have an amended motion on the floor first that I'd like to have a vote on, please. All in favor of the amended motion, which I believe included those secondary caveats. All in favor, not opposed. All right, now I'll ask for a vote on the original motion. So, no, it's already been moved. We've got a vote. Oh, yeah, vote, yeah. So all in favor of the original motion to approve the project with the caveats outlined by the superintendent plus the additional ones. All in favor? Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Just a question. Project for the board. Sure, it's outside of you guys. So, but uh, I thought the uh, the vote for the innovation district um, that we did um, with the uh, T's Capital T's project. We say that again. The vote we did for the site plan uh, outside of that. Um, but um, I thought we kind of um, set that up so they different as they sold the properties, we would consider them. So just for a point of clarity, you want to wait until that there. The infrastructures there before we start accepting other projects. Well, and, and what we want to do is uh, going down innovation way to get that next pri potential private way. Right. If a project is coming forward that's going to require that private way to be developed, uh, we would like cross hold holdings to come forward either at concurrently or prior to that lot coming in front of the board for approval of the private way with the sewer, sewer to the district. Um, and then that would allow approval of these other lots. 
Okay. Like we'd be tying into it. Yeah, I was just trying to get that right in my head. Um, I was just, I thought we were kind of voting this so it could be kind of standalone on its own after the initial project, so more from my own mind than anything else. And the reason why we didn't approve the, the uh, right of ways is there's the potential that somebody could buy all six lots and just build one large building there and there would be no private right of way. I do remember you saying that now. Thank you. I think my concern was we were approving it before we had the design for the sewer and the street. We're connecting in these. Oh, I understand that. Too. It's, it's pretty standardized connections, but. Still, we should have the design for the, for the roadway before we start mm -hmm. hooking up the houses. And it doesn't have to be in the ground for the, before they get approval, but we should have approved the, <coughs> the system. That's what I was trying to get in there. Thank you. Cool. All right. Next item on the agenda Bluebird Self Storage Facility, 110 Farmers Drive. On behalf of Bluebird's uh, Scarborough LLC, Plus and O'Neill has requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approval for the proposed sewer connection on the proposed storage facility at 100. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Uh, this lot is within the Enterprise Business Park and was previously approved for 1,930 gallons per day of typical sanitary. Summary of the construction follows. It's going to be a three story building with a footprint of 120 feet by 280 for a total square uh, building footprint of 103,524 square feet. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The flow will be limited to the, the 1,930 gallons per day for the sanitary waste. Any flow in excess of that uh, or characteristics subject to additional approvals. The capacity reserve fee for this lot was paid at, uh, for as part of the Enterprise Business Park. Consequently, there is no fee due at this time. However, if any flow in excess of the approved amount uh, is subject to additional approvals and fees. Uh, sewer service shall have detectable on underground use by market tape and tracer wire um, as uh, important district standards. The, uh, the CCTV inspection of the installed sewer is required at the completion of the project. Final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permit. Sewer permit is required for the service. Uh, complete application um, and fee shall be paid uh, prior to any work being done on the site. And then finally, the record plans uh, professionally survey, CAD drawing, scan. And if we have the cat drawing, uh, be submitted to the district for the project. Motion to approve. Second. With the stipulations laid out by the superintendent. Any questions? No. I thought we weren't going to accept any plans that weren't stamped. I mean, this is kind that of, was the point we that. made. This is fact, that's one of those. This one? No, this one okay. to say it. But this plan, that, it, this sketch that he has in this letter, is it being... Well, <coughs> oh, this, this actually came from us. Oh, did that I provided them. This is our car, car for... That's what that is. For... Yeah, this is this was well, a tie current from the, the, the Enterprise Business Park right. project that we provided to them. So I know where to find it. To locate the service tie. Okay. And I will not stamp it because I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I know. What's that? I don't understand why not. All right, any other questions about plans, project? All right, all in favor? None opposed. Ben, you scared me there. Well, I... <laughs> my bad. <clears throat> all right, um, next item on the agenda is the 11th month Budget summary. I recommend approval. Uh, Mr. 
Okay. So, Second. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Comments? All in favor? Public comments, because the only public that was here left, we don't have any of those comments. Um, trustee comments, uh, why don't we start with Ben on the right side of the table. So, coming to the end of the year here, I want to wish everyone happy holidays and uh, a good 2020. Doesn't he want to hear our comments? Where did he go? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he go? How come he gets to leave? <laughs> did he say excuse me? Anyway, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And um, again, my heartfelt thanks to Ben for being here. Thank you. 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 Merry Christmas. Thank you. Oh, okay. I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and a, a great new year and look forward to a, a busy year, as you say. Dave. Oh, yes, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, I will echo the other trustees' comments. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And next year is the year of perfect Year of perfect vision, perfect vision. Oh. Oh, oh, I never That's not going to be the last time you hear that, oh, I'm sure. I'm probably going to use it if I can. <laughs> All right, so um, we have an executive session for personal matter for Title I, Section 405 of the main RSA. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session, and it would be a full adjournment, so we don't have to adjourn. So we're not coming down? Not the full. Okay. 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 I've got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Who's the first? Paul. Paul. Oh. Judith yeah. seconded. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you.